All right, so here I'm going to show you how to create a new project in Pro um, to save to your computer and then begin your work. All right, so uh, when you open up Pro, it'll have a list of current projects, and then you can also create a new project. Note that I'm really bad at naming my projects. That's why I have these My Project with a number after it. So that's probably not great, so I would recommend actually naming your projects and saving them to a location that you, you know, have specified as opposed to just, you know, uh, taking the default name. Um, all right, so that's to create a new project, you can use a template, so map, catalog, local scene, or sorry, local scene, global scene, or start without a template. Um, so I'm just going to start with a map, which means it's just going to load in um, a blank map object. So we'll do map, and then this will be the output location. Uh, by default, it's saving into my documents folder under an ArcGIS folder, but you can save anywhere you want. Um, I'm going to call this West Virginia AGP project. This create a new folder for this project. What that means is it's going to create a subfolder um, in which to store that uh, that project. So hit OK and then it will generate that new object. Okay, so we want to see where that is. If we just go to pause over. So if we go to uh, documents, ArcGIS, projects, and then in here should be my West Virginia AGP oh, going a little further, West Virginia AGP project. And then you can see it's created a folder structure there for this project. So um, this is the to default toolbox for the project, the project file, the .aprx file, and then we have the default geodatabase there. It's a file geodatabase. And then there's an import log and an, and an index folder. So that's pretty much generated with all projects that, uh, that you, uh, once they're created. All right, so since I used the map template, this came up with a single map. Um, let me show you how to add a few other types of content um, into, this, uh, into this project. If you want to add another map, you can simply go up here to New Map, and then New Map, and then it'll generate a map object. If you want to add a global scene, you could do New Global Scene and then it'll generate there uh, like a digital globe. Here we can add new layouts. So we could pick a, a map layout that we could eventually you know, create a paper map within. Um, you can also create your own uh, base map layer. And these are all being stored within this project. Um, where you go to see your list of things is the follow, at the following location. So, uh, first off, I'm going to remove some of this stuff. So if I go to View, I can look, find these objects either within the Catalog Pane, which it opens up as a pane, or the Catalog View, which it opens up as a view, similar to a map view. So what I'm going to do first is go into my Maps, and these are all the map objects that I have associated with this uh, project. So I can rename them, so I'm just going to Click on this and do rename. I'm going to call it map. Uh, let's see, map demo one, and then we'll do the same thing here. Rename map demo two. Rename scene demo one, and then this one I'll just call base map one. Okay, so note that that changed the name there. If I want to add these back in, I can just simply click on the object and open. Adds it. I added that one twice. But it doesn't make sense. You add this one. So you can go in here and add in your object. Okay, so let's go back to this catalog view. Back to the setup. So this is going to be all your maps, scenes, whatnot. Layouts will show up in here, so like paper map layouts. Um, this is if you have any links to address locators. 
So for example, this is the ArcGIS World Geocoding Service, which um, you should have access to depending on um, the, the licensing you have with Esri. You can also add in additional address locators there. Uh, this is databases. By default, you have your uh, default file geo database that was created for the project. If you want, you could cr either create more, so we can do add database, and that'll allow you to connect to another database if you have one, or you can create a new one. So in here, I could create a, um, we'll just maybe call it scratch project scratch space for doing like you know uh, temporary files and whatnot and then that created this new geo database called scratch space this little house that indicates that that is the home file geo database um, if you wanted to add folders you can do add folder connection and that will allow you to connect to folders on your machine um, this is similar to ARC where you had to you know, connect to folders in order to view them. So I'm just going to click on this, uh, this GLAD data folder, and now if I go into folders, it's listed there. Note that the default folder for the project is already there, and it's got the home icon on it also. Honestly, don't do a lot with styles, but you can apparently import styles. These are the default Esri styles. Again, I don't really work with that much. Um, again, you can, you could add a you could add a toolbox by connecting to a new toolbox, um, or you can create a new one. Um, you can also create toolboxes for Python tools. So basically, that's where you go to get your your map content, and do a lot of the type of functionality and things you would have done in in our catalog. Okay, so that's the catalog view. Uh, let's talk real quick about the tabs. So the project tab allows you to save the save the project, open a new project, save a copy of the project. Um, you can also deal with your licensing in here. Um, so uh, things such as changing your licensing or, or turning on extensions. Display options are here. There's tons of options. So, for example, if I wanted to change this to like a light mode as opposed to the dark mode, I could go to general and then change the theme to light. Um, so, anyway, there's lots of options there for changing. One thing you may run into if you have issues with 3D rendering is if you go to display, you can turn, you can change the rendering engine from DirectX or to OpenGL or vice versa. All right, um, options, again, that has to do um, with lots of different things. Again, that's under, uh, um, that there's lot, you know, lots of different options there, so I don't generally play around with lots of these, but you can set them if you want. Um, so that's the, main, the, the bulk of the stuff that's under, uh, under the project tab. The map tab allows you to do a variety of things. So these are your tools for navigating around a map. Note that maps don't have the navigation down here by default. If you want it, you can right click and do navigate, and then that'll, uh, that'll add in this navigation tool. So you can do things like change the, change the orientation, uh, zooming in and out, uh, rotating, so on and so forth. All right. Um, this is again stuff you are probably familiar with from Pro. So you have all these tools for zooming in, zooming out, zooming to full extent, going back to a prior extent, moving forward, creating bookmarks. Um, this allows you to go to a specific XY coordinate. Uh, this allows you to change the base maps. Um, oops, and then this uh, add data allows you to bring in data. So real quick. This is a, a folder that um, we're using for this class. I can bring in data there. So this is a, a land cover data set. Um, I could also pull in data remotely. So for example, I could go to the Living Atlas and pull in data from there. Let's just Google uh, US Census.
people in these populated places. So that's coming in from Esri's Living Atlas uh, of the World service. Sometimes these will take some time depending on how large they are, and then also, uh, and then also their, uh, um, yeah, their, their, their format and your own internet connection and whatnot. So there's that layer. Okay, so that's the map tab. Again, you can make measurements, find things, um, all the selection options, select by attribute, select by location. Uh, the insert tab will change depending on what you're looking at. Um, here, this allows us to add in a new map or a new layout, um, make connections to databases, add toolboxes, import maps. For example, if you want to import an MXD file, the analysis tab is all the analysis stuff. It links to like the toolbox, for example. So you can create a new model, use Python script, look at your history of tools that you've ran in the project, set your environment settings, open the toolbox. So here's all the toolbox, which is pretty similar to how it was set up in Arc Online, or sorry, or Arc Map. And then these are linked to some common tools um, network analysis, geostatistical wizard, business analyst, raster analysis, so all your analysis stuff. The view tab, this allows you to turn panes on and off. So for example, if I got rid of the content pane, I go to view and turn the contents back on. I could add like a Python window, which we don't really need here. Um, let's see, I don't generally use those too often. Again, let's get rid of this. That's the catalog pane. So let's turn this stuff off. So if I wanted to get that back, I could go to catalog pane, and that would pop back up. I can also get the catalog view, as we looked at earlier there. So lots of options for turning things on and off. Uh, this is for the, the navigation, turn that on and off. Um, this editing is for feature editing. So if you have a layer that's, that you can edit, you can do create and then start doing your editing. You can also define things like topological rules, set up snapping, do manipulation of features after they're collected with a wide variety of tools. This imagery tab is used for functions associated with working with images. So um, anyway, uh, those are Things like uh, georeferencing data, doing image classification tasks, creating band indices. A share tab is used to do, again, a wide variety of things. So you can create a, a package, um, a project package to share your project with someone else. Kind of think of it as like a compressed folder. You could also just share a specific map or a specific layer. Um, there's options here for prepping data for deep learning. The the web the sh share as area allows you to export out uh, web maps and layers for for and layers for use on the web um, as associated with your ArcGIS Online account um, and then just some other ones are commonly used you can create templates and you can also export like map layouts. Note that there are sometimes other th other attributes that p or other tabs that pop up depending on what's selected. So right now I have this uh, this U.S. Census layer selected. So we have this tab, uh, these tabs associated with feature layers. So we have an appearance tab. This allows you to set things like transparencies. Um, you can do a swipe, swipe the layer on and off. Um, this is refresh rates. You can set visibility scales, so turn it off when you zoom out past a certain point or zoom in past a certain point, and then change the symbology and even do extrusions and whatnot if you're dealing with the data in a 3D environment. There's also a tab here for working with labeling. Again, um, similar to ArcMap, ArcGIS Pro uses the Matplex labeling engine and then you have this data tab. So the data tab allows you to do a couple things such as set up subtypes and domains. Um, you can look at the attribute table. You can also look at um, the fields in the attribute table. So if I click this, it'll open up a list of all the fields that are available in that table. Loads it, and then uh, so that's going to give you the the field names, the alias, the data types, 
um, and some other uh, components. It's not wanting to add, so we'll just turn that off. <laughs> um, so again, you'll get different tabs up here based on what you're doing. So, and you'll see that throughout if you're doing things like making a map laid out, layout, doing georeferencing, do, uh, working with Model Builder, you'll get different different tabs that pop up. Uh, one thing I do like about Arc Pro is a lot of the components tend to come to you, and you don't have to, you know, look uh, f look for things as much as you maybe had to in Arc Map. Again, that's just my opinion.